Multi-factor authentication means we're going to use a few different kinds of information to be able to authenticate you onto the network. We may be using something you know along with something you have and maybe something you are. There may be a combination of two or three different factors we might use for you to gain access to this network. You also want to think about this as you're implementing it because it can be a little bit expensive. You may require that everybody have a hardware token. They have to carry that hardware token everywhere they go. The token itself has to be paid for. If somebody loses a token, you have to replace that token, and there's a set of processes associated with it. So it's not only expensive physically, but there may be some extra processes associated with multi-factor authentication. But there are also times when multi-factor authentication can be relatively inexpensive. These days, there are a number of absolutely free applications that you can get that perhaps even your bank or other services you might use may allow you to load right on your smartphone. You can carry that wherever you go. It costs you nothing. And yet now you're able to have multi-factor authentication into those services. One thing that you might have is something like a smart card. Here's an example of one. It has a tiny little chip inside of it that's storing a certificate on it. And what we'll do is associate that certificate with your login name. So not only do you have to put in a username and password, you have to connect and slide this smart card right into the laptop or the desktop unit that you might be using to gain access to the network. You might also be required to type in a PIN number. That way, somebody just couldn't steal your card. They would also have to know what your PIN happened to be to gain access to that. Another type of thing that you might have with you is a USB token. It's a USB drive, and the certificate is on that USB drive. Many devices already have USB ports associated with them. So you might have some software that is on that USB drive. You plug it in, and that recognizes who you are. Perhaps you're also using a pin with that as well to ensure that nobody got their hands on your USB drive. You might also have a physical hardware token or a piece of software that's a software token that's running on your smartphone. And that is giving you what looks to be just a random set of numbers. But it's not really. It's pseudo random. It's an expected set of numbers that's synchronized with the home system. So when you log in with your username and password, you're also prompted to type in what numbers happen to be on the front of that token generator. You type in those numbers, and now you're able to sync back and compare them with what is expected at the home office. And if they match, you now have access to the network. And another way is these days, we even do this through the phone system. When you log in with your username and password, you immediately receive an SMS message on your telephone with those numbers that you would need to type in to go back to the home system. And then it can validate and make sure that you are who you are. So as long as you have your phone with you and you are in possession of it, you can use that as another factor of authentication. Multi-factor authentication is becoming a very important part of our security infrastructure. And if you need additional security layered right on top of your authentication process, multi-factor authentication may be the way to go.